every Lakota family has a dear woman story. Yeah, so if if you ever visit a reservation and you make good friends with people there, ask them to tell you a dear woman story because every family has one, at least one, okay? And they are quite quite interesting, yeah? And uh, let me tell you a one that I know. This happened in the 1960s, yeah? Some, I think maybe the late 1960s, this happened uh, to two Lakota guys. Um, we lived in a town called Dupree, South Dakota, on the Cheyenne River Sioux Reservation. And um, these two Lakota guys, uh, one of them, he had a house. I don't know, maybe about, oh, hmm, 15 miles, 10, 15 miles south of Dupree. But it's a gravel road, yeah? it's, so you have to drive slow. So, you know, on, on, a normal, on a normal highway, you know, maybe you're there in 15 minutes, but on a gravel road, it takes a little bit longer, yeah, because you have to drive slower. And then deer might be jumping across the, river, uh, across the road, rabbits and skunks and all kinds of things, see. Oh, you got to be careful when you drive at night, yeah? So, um, these two guys, they were out there and, uh, you know, they're riding horse and and fishing and, and uh, stuff like that because they lived out in the country. They're kind of bachelor guys. And uh, <clears throat> after seeing that movie, Brokeback Mountain, now I really look at these guys differently, yeah? <laughs> Because there's, there, there's guys, you know, when I was a little boy, you know, sometimes you, you know, you travel someplace and you see men living together and my mom would say, oh, there's just bachelors. They, they don't want to get married. So they, they're friends and they stay together. And then, and now I really wonder about that. Yeah. <laughs> After watching that movie, Brokeback Mountain, boy, everything changed. Yeah. <laughs> my outlook on those guys really changed the, the guys that i i knew yeah from the rest these were people no they were like my uncles you know from my uncle's generation we'll say yeah <laughs> but these two guys i'm not related to them okay but my childhood best friend one of these guys is his uncle so through him i learned the story okay and um in this story this uh, um these two guys um they were um out in the country yeah they like i said one of them had a house out there so they were out there and and they decided to come into town to get drunk yeah they they worked for a rancher and they got paid and at the end of and at the evening you know they you know washed up and combed their hair and and, and put their clean clothes on, and they decided to come into town and get drunk at the local bar. So they were coming into town, and here, um, maybe, you know, about after 10 minutes or so, they saw two people ahead, and the sun was just getting ready to set. Yeah? It was still light out in the sky, but... Um, they saw these two people uh, on the road and and you know back then you know uh, Lakota people really were you know they're more generous than they are today okay they're more compassionate back then than they are today so they were they thought hey let's give these guys a ride yeah and uh, cuz they might they, they might be relatives or they might be coming in from another town because there was a town uh, further south, called Cherry Creek, or and and also another one called Red Scaffold. So they might be related. Yeah. So they thought they'd pull over and pick these guys up and drive into town, have some beers and so forth. So as they got closer to these two people, they realized these were women. 
Okay, now remember the time period. The time period is the late 1960s. Okay? Late 1960s. Okay. These women were dressed like they like they were from the Victorian era. Okay? So you know what that is? Um uh, all you people out there, do you know what the Victorian era looks like? Um let me let me look at a um um of uh, some pictures and I'll try to describe it for you if if you don't if you don't know um hmm. I'll try Victorian era photos and let's see well what I can oh yeah 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 okay <laughs> shit they look crazy man <laughs> <laughs> the first images that show up are uh, there was a guy uh, who took photos of dead people and he propped them up on couches like they were still alive and he took photos of them in the Victorian era. And geez, they're scary photos. That's not what I'm talking about, okay? <laughs> Jeez, these are creepy. Oh my goodness. Now I'm gonna have nightmares. I'm gonna turn on all the lights. <laughs> okay, here we go. Some alive people. Whew. <laughs> oh man, <clears throat> these those were creepy. Okay, they have uh, they wear long dresses. Yeah, really long dresses. Uh, they're kind of um, frilly dresses, like. And um they're you know, they they um they carry like, you know, certain kind of bags, yeah. And um it was um um you know, they they were they just seemed out of out of um time yeah it seemed like they were um they it seemed like they were um um that they were um like they came out of like out of i don't know like i you know like they just jumped jumped into the future yeah their future which is our time yeah it's just weird. But these guys are res guys, and they don't know. They don't know um, Victorian dress, yeah. But they, the way they described them, that they had long dresses. They wore these tall caps, yeah, hats, really kind of fancy hats on their head, and they were carrying these big bags, and they they looked. Um, you know, kind of, um, kind of classy, yeah, and <clears throat> so these two guys, they thought, oh, man, what should we do, and they said, no, we can't just leave them out here, it's another 20 minutes, yeah, drive, and to walk, it's probably a couple hours, yeah, it, 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 they're probably going to take a couple more hours to walk into town, and, you know, there, there could be, um, you know, coyotes out there, or maybe there's a skunk. Yeah? And if a skunk has rabies, look out. Yeah, it's, geez, that, that's not a good thing. So there was, they had to be, they were thinking, what should, we can't just leave them out here. So they pulled over and they asked them, they said, they, you guys want to ride into town? They said, and those ladies didn't even say anything. But they stopped. Yeah, they stopped and they were just looking straight ahead. You know, down the road. They were just looking down the road. So these two guys said, um, if you guys want to ride, uh, jump in. Still nothing. Yeah, the, Those ladies were just standing there. And, and they weren't, um, they weren't um, making any noise or anything. Yeah? They didn't say anything. They just were looking straight ahead. So then, um, you know... Um, they were remembering that, you know, one one time 
on on some of the reservations there were white people that were walking through um they were following rivers and things like that this was during the depression so we're talking 1930s okay that in on reservations across america a lot of you know poor white people were following rivers and um you know, they didn't have jobs, they didn't have cars, they just had suitcases and, and they were following the rivers trying to, you know, hoping to get to a city to try to find jobs. So whole families would be doing that. So on our reservation, uh, my mom would talk about that. Yeah, her her parents told her about that, that that a lot of uh, white people would be following the river. And my, where my mother grew up, there's a river that goes there. And so her parents told her that, yeah, you got to be careful because you never know. There might be some white people walking by and you can't trust them. Yeah, you don't know if they're dangerous or friendly or not. And uh, so um, that's what these two guys remembered, too. Yeah, they remembered that there was um, in the 1930s, there were white people that were traveling through the, the reservation because of the depression. Yeah, they were looking for work. And so they were thinking, are these ladies like that? Yeah? <clears throat> and they thought, hmm, look at the way they're dressed. Nobody dresses like that anymore. And so they were getting a little bit curious, yeah? So they thought uh, maybe they should take them to the police. And they didn't want to leave them out there because if they drive to the police, the police might get mad at them, yeah? He might throw them in jail for not helping them. So they they decided okay let's let's take them into town and we'll take them to the police and so then uh, that way you know you know we can't we can say that nothing happened. So the they the women were not getting in, but you know on our reservation there there were some people you know that are immigrants and some of them don't speak English too good. Yeah. And so they thought maybe they're immigrants, and so they they said, okay, we'll just open the door, yeah, open the open the door, and then um, you know the, it was a four door car, yeah. So they opened the back doors and they said, okay, let's let's see if they get in or not. So they opened the doors and they said again, one of the guys said, if you want to come with us, get in, and we'll take you to we'll take you to the police so he can help you. So then those women, you know, they they turned around and then they looked at the car. And it looks like they were just looking through the car. Yeah, it looks like they weren't really looking at the car, but like they were looking through it. Then they walked to the car and then they got in the back seat. So then uh the the guys they 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 took off. Yeah, they 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 were asking them, "So where are you guys from?" And they didn't say anything. They're just looking straight ahead, yeah, looking down the road. And then so the guys are saying, yeah, this this is so-and-so, and my name is so-and-so. What's your guys' names? Still, those ladies didn't say anything. So um, they said, let's turn the radio on. So they turned the radio on. They listened to some country music. And then they uh, were driving and... Um, and here, um, next thing you know, the, the driver, um, the lady be sitting behind the driver, kicked him in the back, and and uh, and they're like, hey, he really moved. He's ow, oh, he said that. And then the two guys looked at each other and they said, oh shit! They said so they knew it. They by then they figured it out. They knew what it was. Yeah. So they pulled over right away, and they, um, you know, as they were pulling over. Um, both women were really kicking the back seats, yeah, of the of of in uh, of the front seat. But when you looked at them, they were looking straight ahead. Their arms were down, yeah, and just their legs were really kicking the seats. But the upper part of their body was stiff, yeah, looking and their and their faces made no expression, and they were just looking straight ahead. And so they fi they figured out what it was. So they put, as soon as they the car came to the stop, both guys they opened the back seat, uh, opened the back doors, and then the women ran out. Yeah, 
and they were running down the road in you know in front of the car yeah so the the car headlights were shining on them so they were running down the road and their arms were straight down carrying their bags their upper body was just stiff but their legs were really running fast yeah faster than humans can run and then they turned off to the right and they jumped over that fence and um again their upper bodies were very straight just stiff their arms were straight down holding you know holding their bags and but their legs you know there's something peculiar about their legs so they they drove to where they were where they jumped over and they turned the headlights in that direction to see and here sure enough there's two black-tailed deer were running in the distance these were deer women See, this kind of thing happens out in the wilderness. Yeah? And it's black tailed deer that this happens to. So in Lakota tradition, you're not supposed to eat black tailed deer because of this. And the other thing is that black tailed deer, they have a, a, a certain kind of a vessel, a vein that that connects to, I think, what is it? It's one of the hind legs. I can't remember if it's the left one or the right one. And if you kill a black-tailed deer, you have to be careful when you butcher it because what happens is that that vein, it, no, uh, the other deer don't have this, okay? Just black-tailed deer have this. That when you're, when you're skinning the animal as you're butchering it, this vein breaks, and then it taints the meat. Yeah, so you could get sick if you eat that meat. So <clears throat> this is this is why uh, traditional uh, Lakota people, when they go hunting, they avoid black-tailed deer. Yeah, they, they might be really easy to kill, but they just let them go. Yeah, because of this reason, because there's something weird about these animal. And like I said, they can turn into women. And there's a purpose in that. Yeah, It's not a good reason. <laughs> it just so happens these two guys, see, like I said, it, it makes me wonder about these two guys. Were these two guys gay guys? Because the women didn't do anything. Yeah, they didn't do anything. So... I, I, they might have picked up on the fact that they were they might have been gay, so that's why they they they, they started to kick the seats, yeah, and then they jumped over the fence and took off. So after that, these guys, you know, jumped back into the car and just drove like hell, yeah, back into town and and made it in, and, and they were <laughs> they were, you know, they had to go to Inipi, they had to go through Sweat Lodge. Because when you when you encounter one, see an energy goes inside of you, and you have to get it out. And if you don't get it out, you could it could really make you sick somehow. Yeah, it, it could make you it could drive you crazy. So for you know to achieve mental clarity, mental stability, you have to go through a sweat lodge ceremony to, to with a holy person. Yeah, to get that energy out, and usually. The way it comes out is you're going to be vomiting uh, yellow fluid. You see the similarities with, with women who uh, survive Alkman. Alkman, yeah, they do the same thing. They vomit out a yellow substance. It's really, uh, it's not a pretty yellow, okay? It's it's a sickly yellow, and the energy is really not good, yeah? And it could make you go crazy. So this is what they did. Yeah, they had to. They both had to go to sweat ceremony and get that energy out. And um, that's what happens. Yeah, that's that's one example. Now, when I told this story, see, I used to teach in high school, and when I still lived in South Dakota, and I when I told this story, the, the, this, some of these these kids really got scared. Yeah, and it was during the daytime. The way I described it, and you know, these women running really fast, but their arms are straight down, yeah, 
and their bodies the body's not moving, the head's just stiff. It's only the legs that are moving. That one of my students wanted to tell one from his family. So I said, The floor is yours. Yeah, you can you can tell yours. And he said his his family, it was his uncle that experienced something very similar. Yeah, that they live in the town um that's you know, it's on the reservation. It's an Indian town, and his uncle drove a school bus. <clears throat> Excuse me. He drove a school bus to get the kids who live out in the country. And so the school administration let the uncle keep the bus at his home. So this way he can get up and right from his home just take off, yeah, go go pick up the kids and bring them to school because the school was not in the same town. The school was in a different town. That's why they let him keep the bus. Yeah. So he he would pick up, you know, he would get up maybe 4 or 5 in the morning and start, you know, stopping at all the ho- the homes of the Indians who live out in the country. And, you know, they're standing by their gates waiting for him. So he picks them up and they get in and, you know, so he picks up all the Indian kids and then he takes them to school. And then when he's at the school, he's kind of a janitor. Yeah? So he cleans up things. And then when school's out, he goes, you know, just before the school is out, he goes to get his bus, warms it up, and then brings it to the entrance of the school. Then all the kids come out of school and they get on the bus and then he drives them home. Yeah. And then he then he drives the bus to his house. Yeah, that's his schedule, okay. So this this was uh, in the in the um, autumn, yeah, during the autumn, and the days are getting a little bit shorter. So it's probably about I don't know early part of October. And he he it was school was out. And so he he was dumping off the kids, yeah, dropping them off at their homes. And after he dropped the last one off, you know, the, the sun was starting to set. It was still sunlight, yeah. It, it was still sunlight, but it, you could still see everything. But it was getting evening time, yeah. It was evening time. And this is a gravel road, yeah, between the school and where he lives. It's a gravel road. And you know it's it's people are always well hitchhiking on there because there's this road connects two Indian communities that are about half hour apart. Yeah, one community is called Red Scaffold, and the other one is called Cherry Creek, and the school is between the two towns. Okay, the school is in a a, a, a place called Takini. It's it's in the middle of these towns, all right. So you see now he has to, it's better for him just to keep his the bus at his home, and then he can just pick up kids, go to go to the school, you know, do some janitor work, and then schools out, bring the kids home. Yeah. So it's it, but there's always people hitchhiking, so you always see people walking on the road. Yeah. So he was uh, driving along, evening time, dumped off his last kid, and he saw somebody walking up in the distance. And, you know, he's not supposed to pick up hitchhikers, but, you know, he's he's a generous guy. Yeah, so he decides, I'll give this person a ride. So he starts slowing the bus down, and he realizes it's a woman. And then... Um, so he pulls over beside her, and then she stops. Yeah, and uh, and so um, he he um, asks her. He said, "Hey, you want to ride? Um, I'm going into Cherry Creek." He said, and the lady just looks straight ahead. She didn't say anything. And he said, "Oh shit!" He said, <laughs> he knew what it was. Yeah, right away. So he cl- he slammed. <laughs> The door shut right away, and this thing started kicking the door. Her body was stiff, yeah, her upper body from the waist up. Her body was perfectly stiff, and her, and she was looking straight ahead, but her legs were kicking the door, yeah, really kicking the door, trying to break in. 
So you put the bus in gear, and for those of you who've driven buses, you know that takes a few seconds. <laughs> Some long, agonizing seconds. <laughs> he started to go, yeah, he started to slowly take off, and this, this, this woman was running beside the bus. And right beside the door, yeah? And he didn't want to look, but he could see in his peripheral vision that she was right beside the bus. So he really put it in gear, in high gear. He started going really fast. And he was getting scared because this is a gravel road, yeah? And he might slide off the road. So he was trying not to go fast, but he still wanted to go fast anyway. So he must have been traveling, I don't know, maybe 70 miles an hour. On a gravel road, it's really deadly. Yeah, 70 miles an hour is probably about a 120 kilometers an hour, or is it 140, or is it 150 kilometers? Let me let me get that, because I have most of the world doesn't know miles. Most of the world knows kilometers. So let me um, make that um, conversion uh, for you. The, this metric conversion. Uh, from uh, from miles to kilometers. <laughs> okay. Um, shoot, I just got temperature here. Okay, I don't need that. Um. Okay. I gotta find an online converter really fast here. Um, converting miles to kilometers. Okay. Here we go. There's one right here. He was driving about 70 miles an hour. That's 112.654 kilometers an hour on a gravel road. Okay? A gravel road is like a dirt road with, you know, with rocks on it. Yeah? That's called a gravel road. And you can't really drive that fast on there because you could slide off the road. So 70 miles an hour is incredibly fast for a gravel road. Yeah, that's that's almost too fast. But he was scared. Yeah, shit, I would be too, man. <laughs> so he was, the bus was starting to swerve. Yeah, it was swerving to the left, swerving to the right. And this thing was running right beside the bus, yeah? At 112 kilometers an hour, this woman was running the same speed as the bus. No human can run that fast. 112 kilometers an hour. Shit, that's fast. Yeah. This thing, this woman was running right beside the bus at 112 kilometers an hour. And uh, there's a little hill just before you get to Cherry Creek. So when he got to that hill, he started to feel better, yeah, because the, the, the town lights were on, the street lights were on. So he's like, whoo. And then he saw, yeah, that just before they got there, this woman veered off to the left, I mean to the right, jumped over the fence and was just gone. So he knew it was a dear woman, yeah. So he didn't go home, yeah. He <laughs> he went right to the medicine man's house, yeah. And he said, I need to, I need to inipi, he said. <laughs> Can we can we have a nipi right now? He said. <laughs> so the, the holy the medicine man he knew what he knew that he must have seen a, a dear woman, and so um, <laughs> got they got they called some other people and they got everything set up really quick and then they they started it and they took him in and he had to get it out and he said the same thing he vomited up something a really ugly yellow substance. And then the medicine man had to burn that, yeah, and and uh, put sage on it and things like that. So this is uh, that was another story to see. This my student, see, he comes from a different family than I do, and look at the similarities of the story. 
Yeah, the, the similarities are, are there's so many similarities. The upper body doesn't move. Uh, the the woman looks straight ahead, and, and she looks at you. It's like she's looking right through you. And even you, you don't even have to make eye contact. You can, if you just see her, you got to um, you have to do this. Yeah, and uh, it only happens out in the country. Yeah, it's always when 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 you know you're alone. Yeah. And um, it's it's a, quite a scary experience, and they have to do this now. In ancient times, when a man was out hunting, maybe he's out hunting by himself, yeah, and then he sees a woman out in the middle of nowhere, and this is really odd, yeah. In ancient times, to see a woman out in the prairie by herself, that she must be crazy. Or sacred, or something is strange, because usually women don't do this, yeah. Or she's in danger, but it's not a normal situation. So this guy, in one of these ancient uh, deer woman stories, they have a Lakota guy out hunting, and he sees a woman out there. But this guy, he's kind of, you know, he's kind of a selfish dude. And um, so he sees her, and he says, oh, jeez, she's pretty, he says. And uh, as he comes closer to her, um, she <clears throat> she looks at him, and uh, then she looks, turns around, and she walks a different direction. So then he uh, follows her, and then she's taking him into a wooded area, yeah, where there's trees and a valley, and like there's only one way in there kind of thing. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so he, he takes, uh, she she leads him in there. And then um, when, he, when he catches up to her, she's usually standing behind a tree, and he can see her taking her clothes off. Yeah? And, and so she puts her dress on the, on the ground, and she lays there. She's just laying there, yeah, waiting for him. So he sees her, you know, laying there naked. So he takes his takes his clothes off and he starts starts having sex with her. And then, as he's having sex with her, she turns back. Yeah, she turns back into a, a deer. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Usually this happens when he reaches orgasm, yeah? When he when he orgasms inside of her, that's when he's at his most vulnerable physically, yeah? And so as as he's all weak, she turns back into a deer and starts stomping on him. Yeah, focusing on his private part. And um and then at the same time he just realizes that he, he had sex with the deer woman. And so a lot of times the men don't survive because, you know, they're, like I said, it just it happens just after they orgasm. And, you know, the, that, uh, let me say it like this. When it's good, you're powerless. Yeah. <laughs> it just fall off the bed. Yeah. <laughs> When it's really good, it's just <laughs> a man is just <laughs> I don't mean any disrespect, but that's how it feels, yeah, and so see this guy was experiencing this, he's just ecstatic, and then all of a sudden this lady turns back into a deer and starts stomping on his penis and his chest and, and like I said a lot of men don't survive that they're, because they're at their most vulnerable and jeez what a wicked way to die yeah <laughs> I don't mean to laugh but man that's not a good way yeah that's not a good way to go out oh my goodness <clears throat> so <laughs> um, but some guys manage to survive yes like they might realize oh shit just something wrong, yeah, and 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 pull out before they orgasm and start running away, 
Yeah, and the the, the deer is probably going to chase him for a while until it, you know he he gets close to camp or something like that. And those guys survive. It's really hard after that. Yeah, for uh, a lot of times they they lose confidence. They lose. Um, um, you know, they they're they're not good in hunting anymore. Yeah, they lose their hunting skills. They they're kind of useless. Yeah, they they don't they're not smart. Yeah, it's like like they're they become dumb. Yeah, and um, usually they end up living alone. And um, you know, people have to take care of them because they're sickly. Yeah, they're frail. They're they're really um, they're no longer a service to the camp, but people still take care of them because he's a relative, yeah. And he's he's not a, he loses his hunting skills, he loses his his uh, everything, yeah. He just loses it all, and so he um, that's 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 kind of a death too, yeah. In a way, that's kind of a death. So even though they take him inside a sweat lodge ceremony and he um, vomits up the yellow substance, um, after that, he's never the same. Yeah, These are the ones who, who actually have sex with him. Yeah? They're never the same. It's like there's something um, missing that cannot be replaced. No matter what they do, they just cannot rebuild their self esteem. Yeah, they have a low self worth and, and it's just really sad to see uh to see men like that. Yeah, that they can't they're not functional. They cannot hunt. They're not good in thinking. They're not good in making decisions. And uh life is just uh horrible for them. So that's how deadly it is, yeah. To uh, so this is why um you know these these uh, hunters are always. I mean, the, in the men's societies, they teach these to the young boys before they go through puberty, because you know once you go through puberty, a part of your brain shuts down, and you really make stupid decisions as a teenager. So you gotta have the knowledge before that happens. Yeah, and then uh, once you once you go through those years, that brain starts working again that part of the brain starts working again and then you're able to think more clearly. So it's good to have the knowledge before that happens. So warrior societies would teach these things to young boys. Yeah, so that so that uh they they are aware, yeah, that you know, you have to be careful when you're hunting and you see a woman out there. Yeah. No matter what she does, you know, don't have sex with her even if she wants you to. Yeah, because it could be it could be a dear woman, and you don't want to lose your skills. Yeah, you don't want to lose your talent. So you have to um, be careful about that. It's better to just you know um, not encounter you know to to you know don't don't make any physical contact because then you lose. Yeah, and it's also teaching boys, hey. We got to respect the women folks, yeah. You 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 gotta your mother brought you into this world and you gotta thank her for that every day. Yeah, your father and your mother, but it was your mother who carried you. So you 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 treat her good and you treat all women good because they're this they have a very difficult time when they're carrying children and they have a very difficult life too. So, you know, you gotta respect them. Yeah, see all women like the way you see your mother. Yeah, and treat them like that. They teach them like that. So this this is why in Lakota culture, if a man rapes a woman, and he has all this knowledge, all this education, from you know his his warrior society days. I mean his training. If he has all this knowledge but he still chooses to rape a woman he has to be put to death yeah the 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 warrior society that he belongs to they take him out in the country and they put him to death because this is a serious thing you cannot come back from that 
when you violate the sacredness of a woman. Yeah, you cannot come back from that. So, um, especially when you've had all this instruction since you were a young boy, and the warriors they taught you all these things about respecting women, yeah, and and uh, respecting yourself, and that you respect the earth and you respect the children and the old people, and it, respect is 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 demanded from you, and even with all these teachings and you still decide to rape somebody you 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 didn't just violate that person that you raped yeah you violated their family you do, you violated the community you violated the earth and it's the community's not safe anymore because of you and just saying I'll never do it again is not good enough because the tendency you have that tendency and you could do it again. The community is more important than you. The community's needs must be met first and you cannot be a part of that community. You cannot be a threat so your life is over. That's how serious it is. So this is why it's important to know these stories, yeah, to to have respect for for each other, for yourself, the earth, your mother and to live in a healthy way. Dear women, and these are women who um they entice men, yeah, and they um it can lead into very dangerous situations and and when a man sees one he has to uh, go into sweat lodge right away um, to get the energy out because even looking at, you know, uh, looking at them, they they do something, yeah, they affect you somehow, and a man has to go into sweat lodge and he has to, uh, you know, try to get all that cleansed out, and um, it's it's a very um, um it's a very um uh trying situation yeah and it is um it is uh is painful <laughs> cuz they have to um vomit something up yeah it, it, it's a yellowy substance and and it, it, it if they don't do that um it could really um affect their lives in such a way where they lose confidence in everything. Uh, they they can't do their talent. Whatever their talent is, they they can't do it anymore. You know, things like that. It's really a, a rugged thing. Um, and the worst of all is um, when a man has sex with one. Yeah, that, That's the absolute worst situation. Uh, it's it's really deadly. Yeah, it's 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 just uh, a man can go crazy from that, um, and he just loses everything that you know. That he's so much that you know he's just like he has to be cared for. You know, he he, he can't uh, do anything. It seems. I mean, he can walk and he can still talk and you know eat and stuff like that. But it's it's just he 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 loses confidence in everything. He can't. Uh, he can't work, yeah, he can't, uh, and it's not that he's lazy, yeah, he wants to work, but he can't, yeah, it's like, it's like some kind of a depression, a really severe one, yeah, and, and it's, it's, like I said, it can drive a person crazy, so this is, uh, this is, uh, kind of the, the effects, yeah, of, of, of one of these kind of women, Okay, now I wanted to complete some thoughts on that because there were some other things that I didn't have time uh, to say that usually when when uh, someone sees uh, one of these women, what's happen- what happens is that they scan you, yeah? 
they do a scan on you. Now, this is for men. Yeah, they do a scan on you, and um, and then they um, uh, what do you call it? They they read. They can look at your thoughts. Yeah, and guys, you know, most guys, you know, uh, a lot of guys, I should say. Well, maybe I can say most guys because most most people on this earth are emotionally unhealthy whether they want to admit it or not that includes women too yeah um but for as for the unhealthy men you know they have false ideas uh on love and also um when they see a woman they stay focused on their physical appearance yeah they they don't want to take the time to know somebody, yeah, and um, they just, you know, focus on on um, the way she looks. That's all, yeah. They, they they don't realize that you know maybe maybe she's not really good, yeah. Um. So they um. Um. Have a fantasy woman in their mind all the time yeah, you know what they what they um what they think is the ideal woman is is just a a physical description yeah i mean a lot of men that they'll say yeah i want somebody i can do things with and and talk with and and you know do some cool thing but that they don't mean that most men <laughs> they just all they think about you know, the only thing they're thinking about concerning a woman is uh, sex, physical sex, nothing more. And you know, so you just, you know, it, it, uh, you watch somebody. Yeah, even if even if you're a man, go to a busy place and watch. Uh, sit, find a bench and sit down and watch other men, and and you'll see it. Yeah, that you know, when a pretty girl walks by, you know, they, they'll they'll turn around and they're gonna watch her ass. Yeah. Even if she's wearing pants, they're gonna watch her ass, and then they go, mm, "Yeah, you'll see the physical expression." Yeah, and it, it shows you, yeah, that this is this is the, this is what's uh, the what's the only thing that's important to them. Yeah, or you know, you like like I'm at the shopping center. Uh, it could be any store, and for example, if there's a real pretty girl working there or, or someplace. I like to look look around and see how the other guys are doing, and you can just see them. Yeah, they're all staring at her, at her. Um, what do you call it? Her um um, she, what do you call that? <laughs> Cleavage. Yeah. <laughs> what do you call that? <laughs> she, the rugged guy. <laughs> yeah. Or. Or like when a woman bends over, you know, you just just look around. You'll see you'll see guys all gawking, yeah. They're all trying to see if you know her butt crack is showing and things like that. And uh, this is so common. It's 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 unbelievable, yeah. Of guys gawking like this or looking like this. And um, so this shows you, yeah, this. This, this is uh, a lot of men are this way. They just think about the physical aspects of a woman, and this is why in the Western world there is sexual discrimination, uh, sexual harassment is really a problem, and most of the time it's it's uh, caused by men. Yeah, so um, this is the way of the Western world. Yeah, that that w when you're a woman, you, you have to go through a lot of shit. Yeah, because you know guys are checking you out, uh, especially if you know it's a patriarchal society like these Muslim men. And you see a group of them on a train, yeah, they're really going to be staring at you, and and it's it's uh, you know they'll come up and if you're by yourself, yeah, they're going to all surround you and start you know squeezing your butt and and uh, here in Germany it's a huge problem. Uh, because of all the migrants that are here, and women are ha women 
are saying that it's better just to stand there and let it happen because if you fight against it, uh, you're going to get raped. That's really not right. Yeah, I think I think the trains need to have security guys on there all the time to stop that from happening. Seriously, because when you have those kind of uh, predators, you know they're they're not going to change because they, they're trying to. Um, educate these men to uh, change their ways and say, hey, you can't do that in this country. Uh, here in Germany, a woman can go into a bar, a group of women can go into a bar. It's normal. Because, see, the way these Muslim men think of that, they think that when a woman goes into a bar that that she wants to get fucked. That's, what's, that's, that's, all, that's all they think. So they go in groups and surround her. Yeah? So it's it's really, uh, you know, they're saying they have to re-educate them. But I don't think that's going to happen. Really, I don't. Because in their way, if you're not a Muslim woman, and if you're wearing short dress or tight clothes, then you're inviting yourself to be raped. You're inviting um, people to fuck you. That's, their, that's the, the mentality of a lot of these Muslim men. And you're not going to change that. Yeah, so I, I think... This they have to be sent out. I, I hate to say that because I don't mean this in a xenophobic way. I mean this in a way that to be safe, yeah, to be safe, you you put unhealthy people out. It doesn't matter what their religion is, yeah, you, you put them out. But this happens in alarmingly high among Muslim men. That's just a fact, yeah. So that's it's a problem. So. See, this is that's a re, that's a religion that is this way, yeah. So um, it's you, even when the when the religion says no, we we preach tolerance and stuff like that. And honest to goodness, there's just a very few Muslims who actually believe that. And even then, a lot of them are telling their women, "Hey, cover your hair, cover your." cover your body, you know, wear, wear this big burqa and all that kind of thing, that also shows that they have a fascination over, uh, I mean, they have a, um, what do you call it, an unhealthy fascination about the woman's body. Why would they ask their own women and daughters to cover their bodies if they didn't have that fascination? Do you see what I mean? So it shows you that they are you know, all day long they see their women all covered up and and then they go out in the streets and they see these pretty German girls walking around and and they go crazy. And at a swimming pool, shit, they about lose their minds and really harass women. So now they're banned, yeah, from the swimming pools. And I think that needs to extend to the whole country. I'm sorry, but that's my my personal opinion. Yeah, because we can't be always looking over our backs, you know, and, and looking out for groups of Muslim men because this is this is uh, this is this is not right. Yeah, this is this is absolutely not right. That's another story. But what I'm saying is that this shows you. Yeah, the religion is something that's called duality. It's a very, very. Uh, unhealthy um, um, lifestyle. And religion is a part of that. Yeah? Duality, it comes from the word duo, which is Latin. It means two. Yeah? And, and when you have a belief system in which you only see things in two ways, yeah? um, and, there's, and you say, okay, this way is right and anything else is wrong. And whatever is right is good, and whatever is wrong is bad. See, so they start putting labels to things. Everything is seen in groups of two. Yeah? And, and the part they like is called good, and the part they don't like is called bad. And so if you, they'll say, if you agree with me, then you're good. If you don't, then you're bad. You're the enemy, and I must destroy you. See, this is duality. That's the root of duality. And religion comes from that. Yeah, so does racism and ethnocentrism, which is uh, when you start judging other cultures based on your cultural 
standards. And that leads to racism. Yeah. And then dogma. Dogma is when you say uh, there's only one way to do it, and it's our way. And every way, every other other way, is wrong. See, that's that's dogma. That, and you can see that how that produces religion. Yeah. So that's that's a duality. Just a short explanation there. Well, duality also produces. You know, also applies to the genders, and where men are saying, "Okay, yeah, we are strong, women are weak, and women have all these curves and on their bodies, and so you know, uh, they're you know they're they're you know basically designed for sex, and and that's uh, you know to attract men to make them sexually aroused to you know have sex with them." See, do, do, do you see how this is happening? It's all duality. It's coming from this dualistic way of thinking, and religions really are strong dualistic forces. Yeah. So uh, when whenever they op- uh, oppress women, it you know that that also it, that shows in different ways. Yeah. In one way, it says, "Okay, you're my wife." So you have to cover, keep yourself covered, keep your hair covered, so men will leave you alone. Yeah, so they have nothing to look at. And then at the same time, that same man is, you know, takes off in the evening time to go look at women who don't cover themselves, and might even end up raping somebody. But he's going to say it's okay because their religion says that when women dress like that, that they're the enemy. And so to beat the enemy. They have to be raped. If it's a if the if it's a woman, then in their God's eyes it's okay to rape her because she's a sinner. She is, uh, uh, you know, less than, um, and she is, uh, you know, she's she's uh, prostituting herself, even though she, maybe she's not even a prostitute, yeah. But this is the way they see it, and and she's the enemy. She's an enemy of God, so you know it's our right to to uh, do whatever we want with her. So that's why they they start you know groping these women in public and and um, you know if you fight back then they rape them. And they think in their way they think that's okay. See that's their mentality, especially of the Muslim male population. But do you see the 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 fixation, the addiction, yeah, the addictive way of thinking, and that they're only focused on the woman's body, yeah, they they don't want her to enjoy sex. So a lot of uh, Muslims they have their daughters circumcised, yeah, they cut off the clitoris. It's crazy, but that's what they do. Yeah, and, and that her role is just you know to have babies, keep the house clean, cook. That's her role. They're they're this way to the extreme. And now, don't get me wrong, Christians are this way too. They may not do the female circumcision, but they are this way. In the in the Christian world, a lot of Christian women go to university, but they're going to find a husband. They're not there necessarily to get an education. Yeah, so see, there's some indoctrination there too happening. Religions are just this way. Dualistic religions are this way. They put a, a they use women as a, I mean, they see women as physical objects that their possessions, and um, you know, and even within the society, the women are treat it in the same way. I mean, the the women are trained in the same way in that they feel that their role in life is to have a husband and have children. And so they they are taught, okay, you know, um, okay, I'm going to present myself in a certain way so I can attract a man. You see what I mean? <laughs> and so this is, uh, it's, it, it kind of goes both ways. But the whole idea here is is uh, about the woman being physically beautiful. 
Yeah, that, that there's a fascination of the woman's body, and it, and most of the time it's from for men, it's a very unhealthy fascination. Okay, hence the dear woman stories. Yeah, and uh, with the dear woman stories, they the the lot of these dear women see they they can scan a man's brain. Okay, they scan his brain, and then they can um, they they find out um, what his fantasy woman is. What what part of the woman's body does he focus on? Yeah, and and they they scan his brain, and they're able to see these images. Like maybe he was at Maybe he saw a woman someplace, and and uh, he just was, you know. Maybe he saw her her uh, cleavage, and and boy, that's just on his his mind the whole day, yeah. So then he will, um, uh, what do you call it? He will, um, I mean, the the dear woman will see those images, and then, you know, of all his thoughts on what he thinks a fantasy, his fa- his fantasy woman. Yeah, all his thoughts about his fantasy woman are, you know, they're in his mind. And so this dear woman is going to see that, and then she's going to appear like that. Yeah? So when he sees her, you know, he's captivated. And when this woman is, you know, you know, trying to get him to go into a, a you know, somewhere um, discreet, yeah, like in in the bushes or trees or or in modern day it could be um, in a in a room, yeah, or some place that's really really private. Do you see? Then and then um, she's she's fishing, yeah. She she's luring him in, and she's going to trap him. She's going to to. Uh, destroy him she's going to destroy everything masculine about him maybe even kill him yeah it depends on him that's really deadly yeah so this is this is uh why for in, in ancient lakota society young boys are taught you know when they're taught about respecting a woman they're taught, you know, about hey, this includes what you look at. Yeah, when you're looking at a woman, you know, you, you know, carnal nature wants you to check her butt out, to check out her breasts and her lips and and you know all these things and her legs, you know, and and, and uh, you know that there's danger when when you focus on that because. You're going to destroy yourself when that's all you think about. Yeah, when when that's if you see women like that, you're going to destroy yourself. Yeah, because everything you do is going to be affected by your addictive way. If this is this is creating an addiction inside of you, and addicted, and you know, let, <laughs> let me say it again. And addiction develops from addictive thinking. Yeah? It develops from addictive thinking. And this begins in duality. Yeah, it begins in duality that produces addictive thinking. And then, you know, it co- it's going to affect other areas of your life. Some guys, if they do, if all they focus on is the physical aspects of a woman's body, they may even look at their own cousins like that. And next thing you know, you have incest happening. Maybe they even look at their own sisters like that. And then incest happens. Which could produce some very damaged children. Do you see? This is, it's, it's, it's Quite a danger here. 
So the young boys are really, really taught to go deeper, to 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 see that you know to understand that women are thinking too. Yeah, that they're not just objects; that they are thinking in that you know uh, that this is. Um, we have to respect that they have thoughts too. And we have a really old story called When the Moon Cried. Most Indians today don't know the story, yeah, because of uh, a Christian brainwashing that happened on the, in the early days of the reservation, because this story really goes against the Bible. It puts man and woman um, equally important. They're different, but they're equally important. And so as a result, in ancient Lakota society, we are not matriarchal, and we are not patriarchal either, but we're something different. And Christianity is patriarchal. So this is why the, the priest said this is wrong. And, as, and, and during that time period, on the early days of the reservation, you know, it was like a prison, and we were not allowed to to eat, you know, the wild foods that our bodies were used to. We only had to eat the unhealthy foods that the American government gave to us, and as a result, we did, we got physically sick. We were hit in the physical. Yeah, we we were we were uh, we got heart heart disease, high blood pressure, uh, diabetes. Yeah, and and. We were really hit physical. Now, in the Lakota world, there's four parts to the self. There's the physical, the mental, the spiritual, and the emotional. And they're all connected to each other. If one part gets sick, the other three are going to get sick too. Because they're connected. Yeah. Then the next thing that happened was our our ceremonies were declared illegal. So we were hit spiritually. Now we're hitting two of the four parts of the self. Then the next thing that happened was our language was declared illegal. So now we're hitting the emotional. Yeah? So three of the four parts of the self were hit at once. And that's how we became weak-minded. And then the Christian priest came and saw that we were in perfect condition to be brainwashed. And that's how we became Christian. So as a result, most Indians today don't know these really, really ancient star knowledge stories. What they know is only a remnant of our way, but even then, that remnant that they know is Christian-influenced. It's not the original way. It's a Christian version. And it and and this remnant, it's exactly that. It's a remnant. It only contains just a few things from that story when the original story is actually much greater this when the moon cried story is like that most Lakota people don't know that story yeah because it really goes against the Bible and the priest said you know most of our stories conflict with the Bible which means that our ways come from their devil from their Satan See, in Lakota, we don't have, we're not dualistic. So we don't have heaven and hell. We don't have God and Satan. We don't have demons and angels. That's all a dualistic invention of man to control his society as well as others by oppressing anybody who's different. That's basically Christianity. And it's also Islam. Yeah, so our ways really conflict with those religions. Yeah, but our ways have a high respect for women, and because of this, when the moon cried story, um, this teaches that men and women are different. You can't really compare because we're different, but we are both equally important. Neither gender is better than the other. Neither gender is more important 
than the other. We're both important. Otherwise, this universe wouldn't even be here. Yeah, The universe was created by male and female energies. Not just one. Or not just one oppressing the other. No, both. So our ways reflect that. That's why I said we're not matriarchal and we're not patriarchal either. We're something different. That's the ancient way, and most people don't know that. Instead, what what you see is that um, the Christian Indians of today they see themselves as patriarchal, and uh, the the ones who are trying to be traditional they go um, patri- uh, matriarchal. Let me say that again. The Christian Indians today see themselves as a patriarchal society, whereas those who are trying to be traditional, they see themselves as matriarchal. Either way, they're wrong. Because in ancient society, we're, we're not, we're, we're, we're neither one. We're something different. Yeah? So as a result, the, you know, boys are going to be taught to support that idea. Yeah, boys are going to be taught information to support that idea that both men and women are important. So, boys are be, going to be really trained about this. Yeah, and there, and also another thing is that ancient society is a community thinking society. So all the men are going to be teaching these boys healthy views of everything. So when these boys become young men, they have a great respect for women. It starts with their mother. Yeah, then their grandmother and then the earth. And then when they get married, they it, it's with their wife and and their daughters if they have daughters. So high respect of women. Okay? But it wasn't a perfect world, okay? Let me let me say that again. It wasn't a perfect world. There were still things that happened that broke the rules. That's why there's rules, yeah? <laughs> so it wasn't perfect, but it, the system was nice, okay? So um, anyway, um, so this part of that training was these deer woman stories and these mountain lion woman stories. That was part of the training. Yeah. So um so for this reason, um um in the ancient world, um you know it was different, okay, than it than it was today. So um it is you know, like I said, it, it was not a perfect world. Okay, I have to stress that it was not a perfect world, because a lot of Indians today they like to think, oh yes, we were living a wonderful life, and then the white people came and ruined it all. <laughs> and and because the white people were all alcoholic and diabetic, and <laughs> part of that might be true, but that's not the whole reason, yeah? <laughs> we were doing just fine and then the white people showed up and <laughs> this is I want somebody to blame you. They don't. This shows you irresponsibility. Uh, it shows you they don't want to take responsibility for their lives. So, <laughs> oh, for crying out loud, <laughs> oh, it's too funny. <sighs> anyway, uh, um. There were problems before the white people came. Okay? We were not perfect. That's why we had these dear woman stories. If we were a perfect people, we would not have these stories. The fact is that men raided other tribes. And one of the reasons why they raided these tribes was to steal their women 
because horses didn't come to us until the Spanish came. Yeah? So we raided uh, the Crow Indians and took off with their women. For what reason? Sex. That was one of the reasons why tribes were at each other's throats. So it was not a perfect world. We had these rules, yeah. But you know, when you're a camp, when you're in a camp circle, you can't have, you know, you're, you, you, when, you, when you're living in a camp circle where everybody is related, then you have to go elsewhere to find a woman. If you're if you're in you know gonna get married, you have to go elsewhere. And for what some people did is, you know, they might visit other Lakota camps, but what some men did was they went and raided another tribe and took off with their women. So you see, there's no such thing as a full blood Lakota. That does not exist. There's no such thing as a full blood crow or a full blood Blackfoot or a full blood. Arapaho or a full blood Cree that doesn't exist. Yeah, it does not exist. So it was not a perfect world. Yeah, so so they, this did happen. Yeah, this did happen. There's a lot of stories like that. Yeah, there are a lot of stories like that. Hang on, I have to type something because I have a thought, but I'm going to talk about this later today. Um, hang on a stop. Uh, 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 really important story. <laughs> I'll tell that a little bit later. Um, but I want to finish these thoughts first on, on this dear woman thing. Um, yeah, it was not a perfect world. Um, even even before white people came, we we were constantly at war with other tribes, and one of the reasons we were at war was because we were stealing women from other tribes, yeah, for the purpose of you know, continu one continuing uh, the species you could say, and the other is there was some fascination. Yeah, so uh, this happened all over America, Canada, I should say North and South American continents. This happened all over, and possibly all over the world. This was going on. So there, there are rules, yeah, but people sometimes went against it. Yeah, so this this has to be understood, so that the stories are teaching that when this is all you do, when all when all you do is just think about the physical aspects of a woman, it can destroy you, because it's going to become an addiction, and you're going to become dualistic, and then you will destroy yourself. So this is why you might understand me when I say when you follow a religion, you're really enslaving yourself. Maybe you know why I say that now. Because you're becoming addicted. You're developing addictive thought patterns. And that's going to affect into other parts of your life. Because you're going to eventually you're going to become extreme. And that's addiction. Yeah? So you have to be careful about that. So, that's the dear woman, yeah? That uh, that uh, she she can appear as your fantasy woman. Yeah? And, and she, she will, um, then she will um, really, really um, mess you up. <laughs> And so it's up to you, though. Yeah, you're you're the one who follows it. So uh, it's you're the one who's uh, doing it. Yeah. So you're 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 choosing your own destruction when you when you go that way. 
a very deadly thing, yeah, the dear woman stories. 